All right. Welcome back to another episode of Obsessed with Death. Thank you so much for continuing to listen and support the podcast. Uh, you can support the podcast by telling a friend or sharing on social media. All of that stuff helps a ton. Uh, so please continue uh, by listening and sharing the podcast. I am, of course, joined by my co-host, Gary. Gary, how you doing, buddy? Great. How are you? I'm so good. Me too. So Our- good. So good. I feel like it's been a while since I've seen you. You know, we are uh, friends off of the internet as well. Uh, it's been a little while, so it's nice to see your face and uh, chat with you. We got a lot of fun stuff to get into here. Um, but yeah, man, what's going on? How you doing? I'm good. I um, am not going to say fuck a bunch. There it is. Yes. Um we did we did have a, a brief conversation before the the you know before i hit record today and who knows i don't think maybe no one cares maybe it's my problem but gary does use the f word a lot and we're going to try and cut back on it uh only because and like i said before we started i want people to truly understand how smart of a person you are and i think you know the uh the 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 vulgar language only demeans the intelligence that is behind those those beautiful eyes I appreciate that. I appreciate everything you said. And I yeah. promise not to say fuck all the time. All right. Well, we're off to a great start. Um, Let's get into it, my man. Uh, there's a ton of stuff to talk about today. I feel like uh, when we first started this podcast, I was concerned at times where I, I would think, what if we're not going to have enough material for an episode? And we're we're on number eight right now, which, by the way, means we've been doing this for eight months, which is very exciting. We're, we're closing in on a year of the final word, which is very exciting. And I feel like the stories aren't going anywhere. I feel like I could do I could do an episode a week of this. One a month is probably all we could handle. But um, I feel like there's so much content out there. Um, I really want to talk about there's a lot of space news between Boeing, uh, Boeing Starliner problems, and NASA planning uh, doomsday scenarios. We're going to get into some stuff like that. But I do want to start off with something that is uh, something that happens pretty often where I'm at. I'm in Arizona. Uh, You know, Gary's on the East Coast. Not a lot of missing hikers in, uh, you know, your part of town, but... In, I guess in, in Arizona, there's, there's more of just people going hiking and like passing out from the heat and dehydration in California, there was a hiker that was missing for 10 days in the mountains and he survived by drinking a gallon of water a day. Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming through springs and rivers. First of all, if this is me, I'm dead immediately because I'm terrified of which type of bodies of water I could drink from. Even when I lived in Arizona, we would go camping and my dad would like try to show us like little ways to like filter the water or drink water that was filtered like over a stream. He was like, if it went over rocks, you could drink it. I'm not sure that that's true, but this guy survived 10 days drinking waterfall and stream water yeah that's all he did he had no food he survived off of water i'm with you buddy i i'm like what wh- why it runs over rocks so that means you could drink it how does that make any sense to me aren't animals just shitting and pissing in every body of water that's what i thought i thought that i thought that you could drink anything that fell over rocks i thought that rocks were like a natural filter what what makes water. what makes rocks a natural filter? I would take my chance. I have no idea, yeah. but I think that it, like if it gets like the maybe salmonella. I don't know what does it what does it get off of those rocks? Isn't salmonella from chicken? Okay, so there's no chickens. <laughs> Hold on. Maybe I'm not w- wild chickens in the mountains of California. I don't look, know. I look, I'm with you, buddy. I, I my point of all of this is 10 days. There's no chance I'm making it 10 days. 
I'm basing that off of just who I am as a human being and also the photo of this guy. If you are on your phone right now, Google hiker missing for 10 days in California. The guy looks like Robin Williams from Jumanji. I mean, he, if, if you looked at that photo, you would not assume he was missing for only 10 days. You would think he was he was living in the woods for a month. I mean, it's the craziest photo ever. And the fact that it was only 10 days is terrifying. And this guy was like, I believe, like an avid hiker. I mean, he did get lost, so maybe he's not like the most avid hiker. But to only be gone for 10 days and look like you're straight out of Jumanji is terrifying. And I, I don't know how anyone survives when they go missing for more than a day and a half. His hair is everywhere. He's covered in dirt. Um, and the idea that he just lived off of water. How long can a human being go without food? I think water is more important than food. But See, again, but if you can't Google it, just picture Robin Williams straight out of Jumanji. That's what he looks like. And it was 10 days. 10 days. That's all it takes. The only reason that they even knew, <laughs> this is my favorite part of the story. The only reason they even noticed, and I don't know, maybe he's a bad dad, maybe he doesn't call his kids enough or what's going yeah. on. Yeah. The only reason they noticed that he was missing was because he didn't show up for Father's Day dinner. So if it wasn't for Father's Day, if it was just like another month of the year where there was no holiday and he wasn't supposed to show up for any sort of family dinner, he, he probably would have been missing much longer. And who knows if he would have survived. Because uh, it says here you can only go three days without water. So he tracked it out 10 days. You could uh, the human. So human beings could only survive three days. That's yeah, terrifying. You, you can only go three days without water. It says it says it could change depending on the person's body needs. But, but no one could live more than five days or six days without water. Yeah. Do you know where he was putting his water? Because he was finding streams and he was finding waterfalls. Do you know where he was putting his water? In his boot. In his A. That's even so he's just walking around the mountains with one boot on. One boot. One boot. <laughs> and then just drinking out of the other boot. I mean, that's uh, it's that's pretty. Yeah. I mean, dude, the whole thing is insane. Um, you know, uh, apparently he lost his voice. Which is yeah, like God. next level nightmare stuff. Like, Why is that I have nightmare? Dreams of, I have dreams about that. About losing, losing like, your voice. Uh, about like people coming to trying to murder me and and going to scream and like not being able to say anything. Like just like yeah. or having like a scratchy throat and it coming out like. Ah. Do you know why like, he lost his voice? I would assume from screaming for people to find him. He was screaming for people to find him, and then the only reason that he even got rescued is because he still had a voice. And people heard him, and then they sent the. It was a drone. Um, the drone. Yeah, found. the police. The police sent a drone, and yeah. found him. Yeah. So I mean, just just think about, um, you know, the fact that if we didn't have technology like that, um, he would be doomed. Um, but also, he was dressed in all black. Do you think that helped? Like, so that like animals couldn't see him because he was stalked by a I'm mountain. I'm pretty lion. sure animals could see in the dark. And his black T-shirt probably wasn't camouflaged. Didn't remain, didn't remain uh, prominent. Didn't care. I'm pretty sure I, they could see him either way. He was uh, dressed they could in all black. Smell him probably from a mile away. <laughs> I don't know if the black T-shirt helped him hide in the night. Can I tell you this? Yeah. He was stalked by a mountain lion, and he is so like, I don't even know what you would call this, like religious or something he was stalked by a mountain lion and he said that he thought it was like like an ancient relative watching over him and i'm like he i think it, it probably just wanted to eat you but i think it was hungry and <laughs> um you know he probably was just waiting for you to die all down as soon as that boot was out of water <laughs> that mountain lion was going to eat you alive. Oh, that mountain lion was going to fucking crush him. Sorry, I said that, the F word again. Yeah, I, uh, I, I for sure think that that mountain lion was looking for him, but he 
I mean, dude, believes... that's just that's how crazy it is to be lost in the mountains for 10 days. You immediately assume that an animal hunting you is a guardian angel. Guardian like, I, angel. He mm. probably ev eventually if he would have just went up and like tried to like cuddle or hold it out of just pure delusion. And then that's nobody ever sees him again. The, yeah. the drone, you know, cuts through the trees and it's just, you know, a half eaten man on Father's Day. <laughs> it's a great video. If 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 he if he ever truly like leaned into that mountain lion, it would have been curtains. Uh, but that's what he said. He said that he thought it was like watching him and trying to help him. I, that's adorable. Good for him. Whatever whatever keeps you going, I guess. I mean, I guess you need that sort of stuff you to just to. mentally keep you from going completely insane. Yeah, ten days. Ten days is a long time, man. I mean, think about what having you to do? do anything for ten days. I, what could you do for 10 days? Like, how quickly would you be done if you got lost in the uh, woods? Dude, I, I, I would have, I would have started walking towards the mountain lion immediately. Day two, I would have, I would have just laid down and been like face first in whatever body of water I could find. And that's it. I'm done. Uh, eventually I'll just fall asleep in the water and just drown like I'm in a, a warm tub. And that'll be the end of it. I, dude, I couldn't tend. Look, maybe there's something that kicks in in your brain yes. that is like instinct. You yes. need to survive. That I believe, and people have said, and whatever from other missing people. And I truly believe I am built differently than the, the average human being, and that I would give up so much quicker than the average human would. My brain would go, Yes, you need to survive. But after day three, I think we're just going to call it quit. I don't even think I could do three days. I I, I mean, I, I would end there's... up eating some berries that were poisonous. Yes. I mean, I would. Do I wouldn't know what to do. Something. Yeah, yeah. The moment my cell phone battery dies, I'm I am dying quickly after. If I can't call for help, if I cannot at least give like a warning signal to my mother, I think that'd be the last thing I do. I would just try, call my mom and, and be text like, "Your mom." I'd be like, "I'm." I'm cooked. I loved you. It was great. It's not your fault. I ended up in the forest. I'm never going to be in a situation where I could get lost in the mountains for 10 days. 100%. I'm never 100%, putting myself never that. in that situation. So no. I do feel confident that I would survive that situation because I would never be in it. Would you ever like even like snorkel? No, never. I what, just, are, what are people doing? I, do, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, I guess if it's like close to land and you're and there's no oxygen tank, I'm not doing anything with an oxygen tank. There's just I'm no way. Ever going under. Yeah. If, I, if it's just like the goggles and like the snorkel, maybe I would do maybe. But I it would it would have to be. I I I I honestly don't think I would, but maybe maybe I would. But there's so many things that people die from boating and 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 hiking and all these things that they people die from that I would never do so I at least you know the anxiety goes pretty quickly away when I realize I'll never be in that situation but you know who knows I don't know uh your car breaks down in the middle of the desert and then it's like well what am I going to do then that's like a level of survival that you have to figure out I understand what you're saying I'm just like why are people putting themselves in like these crazy situations like what is what is the motivation to like tempt death? That's what they're doing. They're just doing these things where it's like, maybe I could die. I could die. I could die right here. And then they just do it. And I'm like, why why are you doing that? Well, I mean, it's a, just it's a it's a certain type of person. I mean, why do people jump out of airplanes? I would would That's you ever a, jump out of a plane? I have done that. Okay. All right. Well then I'll you see never do that again. But you did it. And what you what was your thought process was what I, I'll, I'll be fine. He, I'll, yeah, I'll hear, I'll tell you my process. I was 18 years old. My girlfriend was doing it. Um, her dad had done it, and he was like, "You guys should do this." As as soon as I jumped out, I was like, "This is the dumbest shit I could possibly do." So your reasoning is your girlfriend was doing it so you're like well i guess i gotta do it too i had to yeah yeah i had to i, I let me I let like... me tell you a, a quick little story here it's my buddy's 30th birthday 
And we're all going on a trip down to Bisbee, actually. Shout out Bisbee. We're going to we're going to Bisbee. And on the way down to Bisbee, there is a place that you could stop at and jump out of a plane. There's like this whole like campground. So me and my buddy and like 10 other friends all take the trip down and everybody agrees that we're going to stop and jump out of a plane and then finish the road trip down to Bisbee for the long weekend birthday weekend. Everybody I'm with is jumping out of an airplane. What do you think I did? Stayed home. I no, I went and I watched everybody jump out. Of an <laughs> yeah, airplane. you watch them jump. I was the guy who stood, stayed on the ground and just watched everybody else have fun. Like, <laughs> like I was their mom and dad and <laughs> yeah. waved them goodbye and <laughs> yeah, l- yeah. laughed at them when it became real and they were all strapped in and did. I did not do it. I would never do that. Blows my mind. There is, the, I mean, maybe there's an amount of money, but there is no situation that I would ever jump out of an airplane. I barely want to fly on a commercial flight. You think I'm going to jump out of a plane? I don't understand why people are doing these kind of things. It's Shark Week, by the way. Like, uh, so I don't know when this gets released, but it's still going to be probably Shark Week. People going into cages and stuff like that. I just don't understand. I don't understand the I the ideality to risk your life did you ever yeah it's crazy did you ever watch the 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 shark weeks where they have the jackass guys on poopy's got bit poopy's got bit got attacked by a shark he got bit during by a shark, shark week yes and, and he's mean, not making any money he's like no. he might make 10 grand yeah i mean the discovery channel definitely did not pay his hospital bills uh insurance covered discovery channel and that was about it but if if you haven't seen that it's pretty wild i mean uh you know there's like obviously professionals on the boat with them and this guy basically dove into the water he did like this like front flip into the water to just basically yeah. make as much commotion as possible he, to scare the sharks away yes and then he grabbed poopies and was like get yes. over here and there's just blood ever it's crazy all like tr- all of the tendons and muscles in his in his yes. hand got ripped apart yes he tried to jump the shark and it ripped him apart and then by the way uh next year for shark week they went and did it again all of them <laughs> even poopies so poopies uh, we, we gotta on, get poopies, poopies. On the po- we gotta get poopies on the podcast he would come, he would come on poopies. he would come on <laughs> We could get poopies. We should probably on, get poopies. him on. He got attacked by a shark. That's pretty good. Anyway, just the the, the, the photo of this guy is insane. It, it's the whole situation is crazy. Obviously, people get lost in the mountains all the time. This isn't like that obscure of a story, but I just wanted to bring it up because the photo, I just couldn't stop looking at the photo. It was just so ridiculous. It looked like he'd been there for 40 days. Yeah, I, I I assumed that he was like strand. When I saw the photo, I thought, "Oh, this guy must have. They must have found him on an island. A plane must have crashed." He this looked is the like cast, He looked like Tom Hanks in Castaway, and mm-hmm. it was ten days. Um. All right, so let's get into some of this NASA stuff. There's two NASA stories we got here back to back. I don't want to turn this into a NASA episode, but. There are two astronauts currently stuck in space. As of today, they are still stuck in space. And big surprise, who's responsible? Boeing. Boeing is responsible. Boeing has built what is called a Starline, and it's having uh, a lot of problems. Apparently, the news has sort of blown it out of proportion a little bit. And, you know, NASA has made a couple of statements. But, of course, NASA is going to try and calm people down and let them know that, oh, technically they're not stuck. We just want to make sure, obviously, everything is working properly. Uh, It seems that a a Boeing spokesperson, who clearly, I'm sure, is always telling the truth, uh, said that helium leaks and most of the thruster problems have been, quote, all stable and not a concern for the return mission, and yet they are still in space. Uh, Four of the five thrusters that were previously shutting down are now operating normally. So at one point, four of the the five thrusters were not working properly. Uh, This means only one thruster out of 
Well, okay, uh, so I'm already wrong. Uh, this means only one thruster out of 27 is currently offline. But you know what? When I'm I'm hurling through space and time, I want all my thrusters working. I don't want 27 out of 28. I want all 28 working as efficiently as they're supposed to. They're saying this does not present an issue for the return mission, and yet they're still not back yet. So helium apparently is what thrusts them through the cosmos. What It's what gets them home. So if any of these things go wrong on re-entry, they don't get home this was supposed to be an eight day mission and i don't even know how many days it's been now but we are weeks into this we yeah, are they were supposed they were supposed to be back on june 14th okay and as we're recording it it is july 9th and they yeah. are still i mean we're so lucky that they're able to stay in the international space station like if that right. wasn't available to them what would be happening would we just have two astronauts floating in space and w would they be w w i mean can they work on this thing while What's... moving through space i can't imagine so the so... only reason they're able to even operate on this thing mm -hmm. is because they have the the iss right yeah so uh i read two things the first is i read something from somebody who had been on the iss and he was like well they should uh, consider themselves lucky because they actually get more time in space, which I thought was interesting. Like that's he thinks such, that's like, such a backhanded way of discussing it. They're like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Astronauts get to hang out in space mo longer than longer. they were supposed to. Yeah, I'm sorry. Maybe enjoy <laughs> yeah. your time yeah. outside yeah. of planet Earth. That's what he was saying. He was Crazy. like, uh, he was like, they are lucky. <laughs> They're very lucky that. They yeah, as he says, while them. standing firmly on the ground <laughs> right. on planet yeah. Earth. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be saying the same thing if he was in their situation. <laughs> Uh, but, so I read that and then I was like, well, that seems kind of shit. But also, um, there is a, so there's 70 hours of helium on, it's basically an escape pod. They have 70 hours on the escape pod. They've only lost seven hours with the helium leak. So they have plenty of time to get back if they had to like jump into it and get back. But... I do think that it would still be scary that the the escape pod is leaking helium. Like if you're having to get on that and go home, that has to be frightening. Like I mean, that buddy, the fact that it's leaking or well, basically it's leaking oil. There's a reason why they weren't like, all right, guys, why don't you hop back in that thing and yeah, go home? Exactly. Like mm -hmm. and I understand everything well, needs to be very I, precise for Can state. I cut you off real quick? Yeah. Uh, so they're saying that the leak is not necessitative to their departure. Uh, the astronauts on the ISS said that they could jump into it anytime if they wanted to. Uh, and they said that what is happening is that everybody is studying the leak and studying uh, the departure and they're using it as like um, information. So like, it's not like it, like it's not like they can't leave. It's that they're using it as information. They're using it as science to. Yeah, okay. look the the fact that uh, there was a helium leak. We're gonna we're gonna use this as a learning experience, everybody. Yes. <laughs> like, get out of here! Yeah. Come on, <laughs> uh, nobody from NASA or Boeing is gonna go on the news and go. Well, you know what? They're actually kind of fucked. So. Um, <laughs> We're just going to take this as a learning experience. And if two astronauts just end up in space for the rest of their, their life, then I guess that's what happens. They signed the contract. So I don't know what to tell you. We're all of us here on the ground that can go home every night. We're going to take this as a learning experience. <laughs> I'd say I felt too. As soon as it's I read crazy. that, I was like, this is ridiculous. What a ridiculous fucking. It's, uh, it reminds me. It reminds me of. The uh, what's that movie with with um, Matt Damon where he gets stuck on In Mars? Interstellar. No, no. Uh, Matt Damon. Yeah, he was in Interstellar too. Um, uh, yeah, but no. Um, the Martian. Uh, I think it was called the Martian. The Martian. The Martian. Well, mm -hmm. 
incredible movie. One of my favorites. Legitimately, mm-hmm. lo- really, really enjoyed that movie. Yeah, me too. It did. It did give me similar vibes in the sense that. You know, he gets left on Mars and the rest of his team is going back to Earth. And then they eventually realize by uh, this movie came out 12 years ago. So uh, sorry (laughs) if I'm spoiling a Matt Damon movie for you. (laughs) I I got yelled at on the Internet the other day for uh, revealing. Oh, yeah. Well, you you, you, you fucked up the bear, dude. No, I (laughs) didn't. You fucked up the bear. Yes, you did. You fucked up the bear. You uh, fucked up the bear for me. Say fuck a few more times, please. Sorry. You definitely ruined the bear. You absolutely okay. ruined the bear. Love it. The story sucks. Tell me how I ruined the bear. I'm just saying, like, did I you now say, have uh, you watched? Did you watch the whole season? No, because okay, so it's then, ruined. So then, okay, so you haven't watched the show, so you can't tell. No, me. no, no. I have watched the show, and I was no, no, into no, the, season the, the, three. Okay, and then you told me that there. I don't even want to say it for the audience. No, it's, okay. Look, if you if you don't want to get spoiled by the bear, even though I didn't spoil anything, skip spoiled. ahead. But okay, tell me what I spoiled. You spoiled the fact that they, that 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 the restaurant died and they had a funeral for the restaurant. Wh- what restaurant? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not there yet. Exactly. It, it, what restaurant? Tell me which restaurant. Everyone you know just that you ass- everyone it. just assumes it's fucking the restaurant. It's not. You're not allowed to say fuck. There's. Dude. Do you know how many shows? That, or how many? How many restaurants are involved in that show? How many I, chefs are involved? I didn't. That's not the. That wasn't the restaurant that closed. Everybody th- read then that now headline. You're spoiling that. It's a fucking random restaurant. It's 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 not two, allowed to say fuck. It's, it's two. It's two scenes. It's two scenes in in ten episodes. Okay, I'm just saying I think that everyone. You, I, assumed, I think that you. Look, I think say, that you I'll jumped this. it. I'll I think that this. you jumped it and it spoiled it for people. I'll, I think that I'll happened. say this. I'll say this. I'll say this. And the only people that are hopefully still listening, hopefully no one's listening. Shut up, Gary. Look, I posted a headline that said they had a funeral for a restaurant. Yes. Every And everyone assumed it meant the, the restaurant. The one that they the were bear. opening. Yes. The yes. bear. Yes. Now, if that was the truth, why would I post that? I don't know. Exactly. But... Because it wasn't that restaurant. It was another restaurant that was one minor storyline in a 10 episode season. I wouldn't post that the main restaurant about the fucking show closed. I wouldn't do that. Mm. And everyone who yelled at me on the internet about it just assumed that's what it was. And it wasn't. Well, that's what everyone thought. That's what I thought. How is that my fault? How is it's that not. my fault? It, that it you might not be your fault. Assume that I'm some asshole that would spoil a show. I it guess, might not be your fault, but like it's not. that's what like, everyone I, fucking I didn't, thought. I didn't spoil shit. So then watch the fucking show like you're going to anyway and realize I didn't spoil anything. I don't know why I'm getting so mad. You got pissed about that. I got I got yelled at. A lot. I wanted to honestly say something to you. Honestly, you should have. And then I would have told you that you're an idiot, just like everybody else on the internet, because <laughs> I didn't spoil anything. If I made a list of all the storylines for that season of The Bear, if I made a, if I made a, a list of ten st- storylines, it would be number nine. If I made a list of, of fifty storylines for that season, it would be number forty nine. It had nothing. It was it was one scene. In the show, okay, and, I, and I didn't listen, even say what restaurant. Listen to me. You have to listen. So what I'm trying to tell you is that people had not watched all of it yet. I so what we were seeing was you saying that there was a funeral about the death of a restaurant. And because we hadn't watched the entire fucking season, we were... It, we, were a, we were assuming... Yeah, we, we, we were deciding... That you were talking about the fact that maybe you had watched all of it, and then we were watching the the restaurant die, but like that's an absolute fucking thing that everybody would decide. How everyone how is that, would how decide is that, that? How is that my fault? It's not that is your fault. I, I, it's I just do, like a goofy I do understand. Move. I do understand your point. Yes, sure. 
It's a show about a restaurant. I posted a thing about a restaurant closing. Dying. By the way, I'm sorry. What does is your life over now? Because you know no, that, it's that, not that, that, that. that it's uh, like. But all, all, what what do people have? People have like shows to watch. Sh- That's what they got. I should have put disclaimer: not the Bear Restaurant, a different restaurant. Would that have made it better? I don't know. I just don't think you should have said it. That's hey, all. Hey, you have a little if, influence. If, like, if what anybody are you doing? reading this on the internet right now could even tell me the name of the chef or the restaurant that closed, I'll <laughs> I'll feel sorry for you. I will I will say I spoiled something. But nobody knows because it was a minor, minor plot Did line. Did people really get after you? I got multiple comments, multiple DMs of people being like, it just came. And look, I'm like, I'm making I a thought whole about saying right some shit myself. I made a whole I'm making a whole stink right now. I totally get I totally get why people were upset about it. <laughs> thank you. But, dude. but, but, just, thank but you. my point, my point is, and I deleted it because I, I thought you ruined it for me. I, I didn't ruin it. Look, if you if you do follow us on the internet and you did see that, I promise you I ruined nothing. If you're if you're if you're still hitting the this the the forward 15 button right now and you just came back in, I promise you I didn't ruin anything. It's so minor. It has nothing to do with the, with anything that has that, that goes on with the season. It's so so minor, I swear to you. It was still very interesting. I love the idea of having a funeral for a restaurant. I thought it was very appropriate for content for the podcast. And yeah, look, maybe I I shouldn't have posted it with only a few days after the show coming out, but uh, you know, hundred percent not. Hey, guess what? A year from now, none of you are going to even remember. No one of this happened. No one's going to care. There'll be a new show. Uh, you know, Jeremy Allen White will probably get canceled for something and you'll all hate him. Anyway, so <laughs> Dude, tell out. the fucking tell the ending right now. Oh, OK. You want to know the ending? Do it's tell fucking, the ending. right now. No, there is no ending. It's a fucking to be continued. It's like <laughs> I was watching a 90s TGI Friday fucking TGIF show. It literally ends with them saying to be continued. And you're like, all right, well, I guess I'll go fuck myself. I ruined nothing. There literally wasn't even an ending. It's a fucking to be continued, you assholes. <laughs> oh, I'm going to end up cutting all of this, but maybe not. Look, I screwed up, guys, okay? I'm sorry. I deleted it. Most of you probably didn't see it. It was kind of late at night. But I did get a little spicy with, with a couple of people. I responded to a few comments. How dare you accuse me of fucking shit up for you guys? Oh, Oh, I did. Okay. I I oh. promise you. I promise you. If you saw that and you decided to no longer watch this the show, I uh, which is crazy. But if you did, nothing was ruined. I promise you'll still enjoy it. It's a really great season. It's one of my favorite shows right now. I mean, it's it's the just the writing is so incredible. The the Dumb. the the acting is so good. Um, dude, I used to work at this Italian restaurant in Scottsdale when I was like, you know, nineteen, twenty years old. And the chef used to just have a bottle of tequila in like a cabinet in his cooking area. And he would just swig tequila the entire night while he would be cooking. That's how he cooks. And every night I would see him sitting at the bus stop on the way home, like literally running this incredible restaurant. And he used to take the bus home because he he got his license taken away from so many DUIs. <laughs> Like I feel he, like if he, a, could, if he couldn't get any of the cooks to drive him home, he'd yeah. be sitting at the bus stop. I swear to God, I feel like I could have been like a chef in another life, you know, just dude. It was kind of like this, I, but I loved different. it. I loved it. It was chaos. There were, you know, people screaming at each other. And then we would all just go drink like psychopaths afterwards. Like That's everybody was best. an alcoholic. Everybody would just. All right, let's get into one more story and get out of here because I am so done with this episode. Uh, pretty sure my neighbors think I'm insane because I, I could hear them talking through the wall, let alone how I was screaming a second ago. Um, all right, so we're, we're done with space talk. We're going to skip the, that this last story. We're going to skip and go right into O.J. Simpson okay. <laughs> because I love this so much. During the BET Awards which was at this point, I don't know, a week and a half, two weeks ago, 
they did, you know, the the normal thing that were that award shows do, which is the in memoriam, where they celebrate, uh, you know, actors and comedians and musicians, and a lot of people, mostly probably on the internet, were upset that they added O.J. Simpson to the in memoriam. O.J. Simpson was put on trial, and he was found not guilty. Now. A not guilty means, in the eyes of the law, he did not commit those murders. So, if you're going off of that, he was a prominent athlete and, you know, television star. Why wouldn't he be in the memoriam? He was a giant, massive uh, 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 athlete was in some very popular movies and mm-hmm. was beloved by a large percentage of the, the United States for sure and the world. So in that sense, of course, it makes sense that he would be a part of the BET Awards in memoriam. Now, do I think he's going to make the cut in any other in memoriams? No, I don't think he's going to make the cut. Not only because of just what people will say and how people will react, but mostly because they exclude people all the time that should have been in. I don't I don't have the list in front of me. They snubbed Brooklyn Nine Nine actor Andre Brower. I believe that's okay. how you say his last name. Um so I mean look, that's my that's really my main argument here is that Obviously, he wasn't the same level as O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson was obviously a much bigger star. But this guy, you know, Andre Brower from Brooklyn Nine-Nine was beloved. There was like nine seasons of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I understand why people are upset, right? It's O.J. Simpson. He essentially, in the eyes of a lot of people, he did kill, uh, you know, uh, his wife and his wife's boyfriend. Yeah. And um, got away with it. Right. But... But yes, in the but... eyes of the law, he was proven innocent. innocent. I think that gives them the the ability to put him in the memorial. To memorialize. My I is, agree. My issue is that there are other actors that got snubbed and, uh, you know, could have easily replaced him. Or it just seems odd that they would put OJ and not these other people. I think you're right on all accounts there. Honestly, I think it's worse that they let Will Smith perform live. It's honestly I think... worse that they let Will Smith come to them and say, I've got a new single out. Fresh Prince was canceled 30 years ago. Yes. And uh, for some reason, I- I'm going to pretend that people still want to hear me rap um, without using any. I mean, he would be ideal for this podcast because he doesn't use any foul language. But my, I, my, my, my final thought on all of this is... O.J. Simpson was proven innocent, so it's not the craziest thing that they decided to add him in there. Also, this is this is really my my thought process. Who would be talking about the BET Awards if they didn't put O.J. Simpson in the memoriam? If they would have, if they would have kept him out, nobody would be talking about the BET Awards. It's genius marketing, and and no one's no one's canceling the BET Awards. Everyone's just like. Well, that's pretty weird that they would, you know, memorialize O.J. Simpson uh, at the BET Awards, considering in the eyes of most people, uh, he murdered his wife. So that's pretty strange. But again, I go back to my 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 other point. It's more criminal that they let Will Smith perform live. It's absolutely insane. I I can't believe that that everybody should listen to what's the song called? The song is called You Can Make It. It's I mean, so there's like terrible. A, there's like a church choir before him. Yes. He's like, he's like performing in some sort of full leather outfit. And it, it, it's 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 terrible. It's so bad. Is he coming out with an album? I mean, look, if you were mad at us for letting Will Smith perform, you're going to be real mad when you see the in memoriam. <laughs> and I think, think that's, that's good. I think that's, I think that's it. I think that's uh Look, I, I believe when we were talking about it before, I said, what's worse, being reminded that O.J. Simpson killed his wife or the fact that Will Smith thinks he has a musical career? 
And I think both are equally depressing. And I wish that somebody would sample the Chris Rock slap and have him rap over that because that would be a hit. And this church choir bullshit that he did, no one's going to listen to. And my other text that I sent you was how depressing is it that when you get older, you just sort of no longer realize how dorky you are. Like, yeah. And the fact that there's nobody in Will Smith's team that has the balls to be like, hey, man, people are only going to make fun of you for this. Like, it's going to go viral on the Internet, but it's only because people are going to make fun of you. No one's going to watch this and be like, man, I can't wait for that new Will Smith album. No one's going to say that. It's so crazy that nobody has the the strength to say, hey, Will, look, man, you're a movie star. You just came out with Bad Boys 12 or whatever yeah. it is. Just keep being a movie star. You, you, you essentially beat the shit out of Chris Rock on live television and nobody cared. Everybody just let it go. And then the maybe that's what he's maybe he's just trying to see how far he could go. It's just they, I, I mean, dude, I loved Will Smith growing up. I loved I was OK. With I, him. I loved Will Smith. I watched Fresh Prince. I watched I like every Fresh movie. Prince. I remember going to the theaters to see Wild Wild West. OK, from an orthodontist appointment, I was in so much pain. My braces had just been tightened and I was in so much pain. And my mom goes, all right, do you still want, I know you, um, you're so uncomfortable, you don't feel good. Do you still want to go to the movies? And I said, yes, I do. Even though I'm in an insurmountable <laughs> amount of pain right now, I need to That's support a nice memory. my guy, Will Smith. And he had a couple of bangers on the soundtrack to Wild Wild West. Oh my God, it was awful. I mean, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Men in Black soundtrack, classics straight classics that I will listen to today and enjoy thoroughly. And when I <laughs> saw his performance on the BET awards, I was just, if I had a time machine, I would go back and tell Rob with his tight braces, just go home, man. Just Dude, go home. it's not worth it. Just it's not home. worth it. It's this okay. guy is not the one. You're going to be an adult uh, in about 20 years doing a podcast from your shitty one bedroom apartment <laughs> and you're going to just be talking shit about him and you're not going to care anymore. And you, you should just go home and have a scoop of peanut butter and just tr lay on the couch, oh watch some God, WWE sounds fantastic. and uh, try and chill. Uh, you take a Tylenol, get some sleep. You're doing a scoop of peanut butter, a Tylenol yeah, and the couch. Yeah, so you're you're gonna you're gonna get home from the orthodont, dude. I had no, just we, now. We got a oh no, not now. When I was a child with my braces oh. that were killing me, I would still do that now. A scoop of peanut butter is always good. Yeah, look, I'm not I'm not shaming a scoop of peanut butter, but what you would do is with the braces, uh, dude. I had the worst thing. I had I had a jaw that needed to be adjusted. They they put like what was like a retainer in the top of my mouth that you couldn't. They would cement it in my mouth. And then there was a key and you would stick the key in the retainer and then turn the key and it would expand your jaw. You would have to do that. I would have to do that. Yeah. For, for months. And I was miserable. So yeah, I would, I would do a, a scoop of peanut butter and uh, you know, a couple of Tylenol PMs to get some sleep and lay on the couch and watch, uh, you know, the rock oh. and undertaker fight. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Classic stuff. All right. I'm done with this podcast. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. If you if you made it to the end of this episode, you're you're the you're you deserve a gold medal because I don't know how anybody would make it this far. How'd you get here? Craziest episode ever. All right, goodbye. <laughs>